The purpose of this lesson is to teach you the basics of how to create a simple web page. Before you get started, you're going to need a couple of utilities. Now, I am using a Windows computer, so I'm going to download a couple of Windows utilities. If you're using a Mac or Linux, you can find programs that do the same thing. You just need to look and find things that have the same capabilities. The two main things that I need are a text editor and an FTP client. The text editor is going to be used to actually make the web pages and the FTP client is used to upload the web pages to the web server. Windows has uh, the program called Notepad built into it that is capable of editing the pages. However, there are other utilities out there that are better suited for that purpose. The one that I prefer is called Notepad++ and the website address is notepad plus plus.org. Be careful where you download this from. There are a lot of fake ones out there and some of them have malicious attachments. Uh, the other program that we're going to need is a program called FileZilla. Now this program is, uh, you can use this on Windows, you can use it on the Mac, and on Linux. And this is an FTP client that will allow you to upload the files to the web server. To start making a website, you need to create a folder on your computer where you are going to store all of the files. Inside of my folder, I want to create the first file. This is going to be in my home page. And the way that I do that is to right click, new, and then text document. Our home page is what's called the default document, which a default document is if you type in something like www.example.com, the real request should be www example.com forward slash and then whatever the file name is. But what happens is the web server is told that if you don't tell it what page to display, it automatically will display the default document. And usually the default document will be something like index.html. So I'm going to name my first index my first file index.html. <clears throat> now one thing I want you to notice here this is still a text file and the reason for it is is I don't have file extensions turned on. So even though I called it index.html, that's not the actual file name. I'm going to go up here to the View menu and turn on File Name Extensions. And what you will see is that the file name is actually index.html.txt. And I want to rename this. So I want to get rid of the .txt. Windows will ask me, are you sure you want to do this? I'm going to tell it yes. And now I have a file that is a web page instead of a text file. I want to edit this document and there are a couple of ways that I can do it. If I just double click on it, it will open up in my default web browser and I don't want that to happen. I want it to open a notepad. So I can either drag it over here in a notepad or any file on the system I can right click on and edit with notepad++. So my document is now open. Now there is actually nothing in the document right now because it's a blank document but we are going to start adding some information to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to drag this over to Internet Explorer so that way you can watch what happens as I make changes to it. HTML is a tagged language, which means that everything that I type within my HTML document has to be contained within tags. And tags just simply look like a less than or greater than sign with something inside of it. The very first tag that has to be on every HTML document is what is called a doc type declaration. And what this actually stands for is a document type declaration or a DTD. And the document type for an HTML5 document is just simply HTML. If I were using an older version of HTML, I would actually have to specify where to locate this. What a DTD is, is just simply a document that defines how to use the following tags. It tells the browser how it's supposed to interpret them. The next thing that we are going to type is HTML. We are creating an HTML document and most tags have a beginning tag and an ending tag. So I'm going to come down a few lines and I'm going to close this HTML tag by putting a forward slash HTML. And what you will notice is that Notepad++ puts a little minus sign here which means it realizes this is a tag and that these two tags belong together. This is the beginning, this is the ending, 
and therefore I can collapse it and expand it. You can move things out of the way if you want. Inside of your document, you're going to have a couple of sections. Uh, the first one is the head, and the head has an opening, and it also has a closing. And then we also have a body that has an opening and a closing. Now the the head is where things are put into the document that don't get displayed on the page. The body is where things get displayed on the page. Now since the head is used to provide information that describes the document, there are some tags that we need to put into here. The first one is a title. So I'm going to name my document my first document. And the title has an opening tag and an ending tag. So the stuff that is contained inside of there is the title. It knows this is the beginning, here's the actual information, there's the end of it. Then there are a couple of other tags that we need to add. These are what are called meta tags. And a meta tag is just simply a tag that describes the following content that is on the page. And what this specifically is going to be for is to tell the web browser what character set to use, whether it's ASCII or Unicode or some other language uh, character set. The one that we are going to use is going to be care set equals and then UTF-8. This is our Unicode character set that we're going to be using for this lesson. There are some other meta tags that we can use to provide information about the description of the page, some keywords that some of the search engines still use, and then information about the author. So I'm going to include a meta tag for description. And its content is my first document, or my first page, whatever you want to call it. Okay, I can have things like keywords. And then what I'm going to do is with my keywords, I'm going to separate each of these with a comma. And what that would do is some of the search engines will use this to try to categorize my site. Now most of our popular browsers don't use this anymore. And then the last one is going to be the author. So this is just information that describes my page. The title is what will be displayed up here. The description and the keyword are used to provide information to the search engines. And then the author is used to provide more information about the page. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to refresh, I'm sorry, I want to save my document and then I want to refresh the web page. So in Notepad++ I can either save it by clicking the little floppy disk icon. I can go to File, Save, or I can use the keyboard shortcut which is Control S as in Save. And if you notice the little icon up here changes to blue, that means that it is saved. So then I go to my browser and I want to refresh the page and I can refresh the page by clicking this little icon right here. And if you notice F5 is also the refresh. So when I click it, Nothing showed up in the body of the document because I didn't put anything down here in the body, but the title changed in my first document. And that's showing from this title listed right here. So now I want to start adding some information to the body of my document. Now I can just type hello world here, save it, and then refresh and it will show up. The problem is this is not actually proper. Like I said earlier, HTML is a tagged language, which means that everything that is in the body of the document needs to be contained within tags. HTML was developed for the scientific community and for the government to be able to share documents amongst multiple agencies. So one thing you need to keep in mind is everything that HTML does is actually still geared towards um, being able to share that information in a, an outline type format. So the way that it works is we have what are called headings and then we have paragraphs. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the headings. 
and a heading is a tag called H1. So it has an opening and a closing. And what I want to show to you is there are actually six different headings that I can play with. They're just different sizes. So there's H2, H3, and so forth. Okay, so what happens is if I open an H1, I have to close an H1. If I open an H2, I have to close an H2. If I open an H3, I have to close an H3, and so forth. Okay, so what happens is H1 is going to be our first heading, therefore it's the largest one. And as we go up in number, the size actually gets smaller. So if I come over here and refresh, this is what you will see. This is my H1, this is my H2, my H3, and like I said, I could have so on. I could have down to 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, but in reality, what we're going to do is we're usually going to play with H1s, H2s, sometimes an H3. But what I want to do is I want to provide some information on the page. So what I'm going to do is I want to make a paragraph. And a paragraph tag starts with a P. And it ends with a P. So I close the P. And when I save this, now I get this. Now you'll notice the difference here that this is bold, that's a heading, and the paragraph is not bold. So I want to make my paragraph bigger. So what I'm going to do is just simply paste this a bunch of times, save it, and refresh. So now I can see this is a paragraph. Now you'll notice that the paragraph goes across the page, word wraps just like you're used to seeing in any other text editor or um, any word processing program. Now what you will see though is I'm going to copy this entire paragraph a second time. And you will notice that whenever we have a paragraph, there is a space between the two paragraphs. This is what's called a block level element. And what a block level element is, imagine drawing a rectangle all the way around this thing. And then a rectangle all the way around this one. And what a block level element does is it actually creates a full width left side to right side rectangle. and it, the next piece of information will be down below it in the next rectangle. So paragraphs are block level elements. Now when I'm working on a web page for somebody else, what will happen is that they will ask me to design the page and sometimes I don't have the text that they want to put in the page yet. So what we can do is we can get some dummy text to stick in there. There's this thing called lorem ipsum text, and what it is is just simply dummy text that follows along with regular constructs of English words. And what this allows us to do is to copy this and paste some information on our page. So what I'm going to do is copy these, and I'm going to put them in here. Okay, so these are each paragraph, so what I need to do is close these and open new paragraphs. Now one thing to be aware, this is not Spanish, it's not French or anything else, it's not any real language at all, it is just simply junk text. They're simply for the purpose of being able to see what it looks like to have information on our page. If you are doing web design for somebody else, there is a possibility this will confuse them. And If that's the case, just do something like putting text in here that says your text will go here and keep copying that and pasting it over and over again. So anyhow, the idea here is that we have these dummy text paragraphs and now we can see what it would look like on our page. The next thing that I want to do is I want to add an image to my page. So I have a folder here called images that is located inside of my universal class folder. And inside of here I have some graphics and I want to put this smiley.png file on my page. So what I'm going to do is inside of my document here, I am going to put the, the smiley uh, just somewhere in the middle of a paragraph. Okay, so what I'm going to do to insert this, this tag is going to be an image tag, and I need to provide the source. So where do we actually find the image? And the source is going to be a... Um, relational location to where this document is. Now the, the document that I'm working on 
is image, I'm sorry, index. And I need to get an image out of the images folder. So what I need to do is I need to tell the system, go to the images folder and then get smiley.png. So the way that I do that is the source is going to be images forward slash, and make sure that's a forward slash, the one with the question mark on the keyboard, and then the name of the file. And case does matter here. So images dot or slash smiley.png and then close the quotes. Okay, now there are a couple of other pieces of information I need to put into my image tag here. The next one is I need to uh, specify what's called an alt tag. This is the alternative text. So if somebody is using a browser that does not support graphics or somebody has a screen reader, maybe they have a vision impairment, it will actually read the alternate text to them. So I'm going to say alt is equal to, and this is a smiley face. Okay, some other things that I want to do is I want to specify the height. So how tall do I want it? And this is in terms of pixels. So I want it to be 150 pixels tall, and I want to specify the width. The width is going to be 150 pixels wide. Okay, and then I need to close my tag, but there is one difference with the image tag. The image tag does not have a closing tag of its own, so I'm not going to put image, close, and then open another image. What I need to do is this is going to be what's called a self-closing tag. So I'm going to put a forward slash and then close it. And so what you will notice is because this forward slash is here, it knows that that's the end of my image tag. Now, if I leave this off, that's actually okay, but the problem is there are still some browsers out there that will require this. So my image, the source, where do I find the file? What am I gonna call it? And this will actually show up even when the, when the image is loading, it'll show up behind where the picture should go. What's its height and what is its width? Okay, so save it, come over here and refresh. Now, what you will notice is that my image is showing up in line with all of my text. An image is what's called an inline element. The paragraph is a block level element. So my picture, I don't want it to break the page like this. So I wanna show you a couple of ways to fix that. In future lessons, we will actually start playing with CSS or cascading style sheets. And I will be able to show you how to do some more stuff with this to make the text wrap around it. Um, but my options for right now are just simply going to be to either move the image somewhere else. So depending on where I put it in the text will dictate where it is. Or the other option would be to put the image in its own paragraph tag. The other option though, is when I was saying about an image being a, an inline element, what that means is that the image itself does not cause a line break. But if I want this, this picture to cause a line break, I can do that by putting in what's inside of what's called a div. Okay, and this is a division. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a div tag around the picture like this. Okay, now what I can do is I can format this div, and what happens is a div forces something to act like a block level element. So when I refresh, I still get this thing showing up on a separate line, there's a space up here. One word of caution with the graphics, you can use your image tag here to resize the graphics. So if I change the height and width here to 70 by 70, it will resize my graphic for me. The problem is, is it's not resizing the original graphic, it's resizing what's displayed on the page. So if I take a picture with my camera, and that picture is eight megabytes in size, and I put that picture on the website, even if I set it to some really small size here in the image tag, it still has to download that eight megabyte picture, which will cause the page to take a while to load. If it's a small difference in size, go ahead and use the image tag to resize it. If it is a large size difference and it will cause your page to load faster, use some sort of graphical program like Photoshop or the GIMP or Paint.net or something like that to edit the original graphic 
and then just use the image tag to do fine edits. The last thing that I want to show to you is what is called a, um, an unordered list or an ordered list. And an unordered list is just simply a list that has bullet points in it. And the way that this works, it has a UL for the beginning and a UL for the ending. And then what happens is I'm telling it, whatever's in here is going to be a list of items. So what I have to do is designate each individual list item with an LI. Okay, so this would be item one, and then item one gets closed. Then item two, item three, and so forth. All right, so this is an unordered list. Here's the beginning, here's the end, and each of these is a bullet point that is contained in the list. So if I come back over and refresh, there's my bullet list. Now, I can also do what is called an ordered list, which is OL. And when I refresh, now they're numbered. There are ways to designate if these should be numbers or letters, or Roman numerals, and things of that nature. We should not define them here. In future lessons, you will learn how to use CSS to properly format these. So for the time being, we're just going to play with ordered lists, unordered lists, and we're not going to try to modify it at all from there. We will do that in future lessons. In this lesson, you learned about how to get Notepad++ in FileZilla, how to display the file extensions to make sure that it doesn't say index.html.txt, because we don't want the .txt, how to create your first web page, including the doc type declaration, the HTML head, meta, and body tags, the h1, h2, and so forth heading tags, the paragraph tags, the image tags, and the alt text that will display on the web page and the screen readers, the width and height attributes, and also unordered lists, ordered lists, and line item tags.